Hello, my name is Boyd King. I'm with the Air Conditioning Department at Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. And this is a refrigeration uh, piping diagram for the use of students and anyone else who is uh, wanting to learn the entire refrigeration circuit completely and very descriptive. Uh, so what I encourage you to do is to stop, pause, write this down, go back and forwards through the video until you are able to recite the process to the same uh, caliber. So four major components in the refrigeration circuit. We have the compressor, condenser, metering device, and an evaporator. The major lines that we have is the discharge line. Discharge line connects the compressor to the condenser. The liquid line. Liquid line connects the condenser to the metering device. The expansion line connects the metering device to the evaporator and the suction line connects the evaporator to the compressor. The refrigerant will go through the system as follows. What I'm going to try to do is explain this to you just like we're putting on our scuba gear and we get inside these lines and go through it and experience what we would see if we were inside these lines. If we're the refrigerant, we leave the compressor, a very high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, de-superheating, that's really hot. If I touch that line, it's gonna burn my finger. High pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, de-superheating through the discharge line into the condenser where it reaches the saturation point of vapor, SOV. At this point, the refrigerant begins to condense. A way to look at that is it's a very, very saturated, foggy day or morning where anything, uh, if any cooling of temperature, it will start to rain. Uh, so in the condenser, we are giving up latent heat, causing the refrigerant to change from a vapor to 100% liquid. At this point, saturation point of liquid, we will begin to subcool. We subcool out of the bottom of the condenser into the liquid line. Three things happen in the condenser. Desuperheating, condensing, and subcooling. We continue subcooling through the liquid line, 100% liquid, until we reach the metering device. The metering device is where throttling takes place. Throttling is the boiling off of a portion of liquid where we begin to cool the remaining liquid. It happens just like that. It's an explosion, a sudden drop of pressure where we boil off some refrigerant to cool the remaining refrigerant. We come out right here in the expansion line, probably the most detailed part of the entire system, a low pressure, low temperature, saturated mixture, 75% liquid, 25% vapor, and we start to evaporate. We continue throttling evaporation through the expansion line into the evaporator where we absorb heat. We absorb heat from the product that we're cooling, whether it's air in an air conditioner or whether it's the heat from steaks in an open meat case in a grocery store. We absorb heat, the liquid continues to evaporate until there's no more liquid. Reaches the saturation point of vapor. This is where we begin to superheat. Superheating is any heat added to a vapor above its saturation point. We continue superheating through our suction line all the way back into our compressor. And this is where most superheat occurs. We recompress the refrigerant again from a low pressure vapor back to a high pressure vapor and start the process all over. Thank you very much. Have a good day.